This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Ann Ortley. This is the weekly weather from May 4th to May 12th. A little late, but we're getting it up. We're getting moving again. Uh, the weekly weather is back. Uh, it is back. <laughs> it's been a couple of months. It's been a busy couple of months here at Ann Ortley's land. Uh, and the eclipses are done. So first we'll tell you why I've been gone and then we'll get into the weekly weather and hopefully we will be back on target doing it every Sunday as you came to expect since 2006 when I have been recording this since 2006. I didn't realize it'd been quite so long, but it's nice to be back. As you can see, I'm still in Florida. Um, life has been a little wild and hectic. So uh, first up, where have I been? Always good to answer those questions with uh, direct answers, okay? So what happened here, uh, you can see the time, 5.34, March 8th. So I think the last recording I did was the beginning of March. And I got a text from my brother-in-law saying, sis, give me a call. And uh, this is my natal chart for the time of the call arriving. You can see over here, the Ascendant and Juno are on my Sun Moon midpoint. Midpoints are really important aspects or sensitive charts because the Sun is your purpose and the Moon is your emotion. And so 18 and 6, halfway through is 12. So you can see the Ascendant right there with Juno, partnership energy. Juno, in my case, is on the world point, and you can see the progressed Moon is there, as is Jupiter. So I'm anticipating some big stuff going on in relationships. You can also see solar arc Uranus there on my Mercury. Mercury rules my fourth house, my third house of siblings, my fifth house of my younger sister, who Bruce is married to. And um, so I was looking at this incoming, and of course the eclipse was right on that Mercury, what we'll talk about in a bit. And then up here, the sun in Scorpio, trining my Jupiter Uranus, uh, and Pallas Athena right on the midheaven, and then most importantly Mars here, just on my ascendant, coming to my progressed Mars in my first house. Now we always have Mars happen a little before the exactitude, right? So literally a degree before. And then here we see uh, the Sun at 18 Pisces, exactly opposite my Sun in Virgo, and we see Saturn uh, here at 10 uh, Pisces opposite my Juno, but in kind of a day or two. And also Saturn here squaring my progressed ascendant at 10 Gemini. So you can see there's a lot, and I mean, I was watching my chart. I knew there was a lot going on in there. There's other stuff too, but those are the highlights. And also uh, Ceres up here is lined up with solar arc Ceres and the Venus is on my node, right? my North node. So we know Anne's going to have some excitement uh, <laughs> with these trans and Jupiter Uranus. It was an unexpected call, and literally the transiting midheaven for the moment of the call was right on my ascendant. So we can see alerts, watch it, and then it's Mercury Neptune. Little did I know that I would be descending into Neptune land, uh, and so my brother called, my brother-in-law called to say my sister hadn't been eating and drinking and she has dementia um and this is her this is me and her at her wedding back in 97 this is her she was very athletic as a kid a lot of head trauma so she has the same kind of dementia that bruce willis has frontal temporal right front now it's left front and what happens is their brain shrinks and then this is the three of us at the beach i'm probably about 12 there um 12 or 13. And she's a little blonde one there. So um, so he said she's not eating or drinking. So that was a Friday night. It preceded a whole weekend of, okay, what are we going to do? Take her to the hospital. She hadn't eaten in a couple of days. Uh, she was in bed, refusing to get up, refusing to move, uh, to leave the bed, and just not eating or drinking. So we called hospice. You know, she has dementia. It's a terminal, ultimately a terminal illness. And obviously, if she doesn't eat or drink for a few days or a few weeks she's going to die so that was the that was that phone call and of course you notice it was right before we headed into eclipse season because it was on march 8th so the eclipse happened uh here 
and that was on March 25th. So the two weeks before we set up the eclipse story and then we go into it. So this is the eclipse, which I knew was going to be big in my chart because the moon was on my Mercury, right? On the and then the south node here, uh, and the sun over here opposite my Mercury, and um, the uh, Saturn. You know, I am I have a Venus Saturn aspect in my natal chart, so there was a Venus Saturn aspect in the eclipse chart, and the Mars Saturn midpoint was right on my moon. Now I use midpoints when I'm doing astrology work with clients because they kind of pop a story. So Mars Saturn, what happened? And left. So I had to cancel my clients. It result there were about 50 clients. Now I do half hour appointments, so it's not as much as it sounds. But the 50 clients got canceled. They all got rolled into my free time and I flew up, didn't fly, I drove up. <laughs> to uh, Ponte Verde, where my sister lives, about five hours north of here, and spent a few days. We got her on hospice, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, and um, got back kind of moving in terms of the world. So that was the first one, and because I knew this Mercury was very active with the full moon on my Mercury, the sibling story, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's good. You know, we got it, we got it up and rolling. You know, I kind of, she's in my fifth house. She's this sibling, my fifth house sibling. I've got Ceres on my North Node. I kind of always thought of her as my baby girl when we were, yeah, I'm five years older than her. Um, so that was that eclipse. And so off she went into hospice. Um, as mentioned, she was very athletic. I was the reading sister. She was the athletic sister and uh, a lot of head trauma. Like Bruce Willis, she has the same kind he has. So then my aunt, last November when I had my surgery, my aunt's husband died. And I'd gone to the 50th wedding anniversary in September. They got married right on my birthday um, 50 years ago. And she was with Uncle Lou two years. This is her with my dad and her parents. Um, and uh, she has dementia. So Uncle Lou died, so we were in the process. He died in November. We're in the process of trying to get her down here. And of course, she's my third house um, aunt. Uh, and remove, you know, she had come home from the convent in 1967, which is these eclipses. So we're getting ready to move her down here to Florida, and a lot of a lot of problems with the insurance company and the, 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 that, you know. So that was. A sub story. She's going to be moving here. We finally got it all cleared. She had congestive heart failure. She went in the hospital. Um, so there was a lot of medical stuff going on with her, which largely my cousins took care of. But, you know, she's my favorite aunt. And she's the only one at that, you know, in that group of people that I was really raised with. And uh, she was really instrumental. You know, you have that adult when you're a kid that you can talk to. That's who Aunt Carol was for me when I was in my teenage years. And so anyway, we're moving her down here to Florida near me, you know, about uh, about 10, 10 minutes away. And so that process was going on in the background. It had started in November when my uncle got sick with COVID and I had my surgery, but now we're at the eclipses. So now it's time to get Carol. She'd had a heart attack when he was sick. So she'd been diagnosed as okay to move. And so we had to kind of get all that moving. Then my brother, I had a car crash. Remember, Mercury is ruling my uh, Mercury is ruling my eclipses, and uh, he totaled his car. You can see the car pictures, and this is the three of us on the front porch of the house we grew up on, and he was here. This is a shot from Christmas. So he had an unstable spine, um, and uh, had surgery, has a titanium rod, has a plate in his back. Currently, he's in a wheelchair doing rehab um, to get better. Uh, so that was going on. He's out in Palm Springs. So that was the other part of the eclipse story for me, why I was eclipsed. Eclipse, of course, means to leave. Eclipin means to leave. So I left. I just had all this stuff. And those 50 clients, when my sister was put on hospice, that I just canceled them all and threw them across the rest of the calendar to, you know, because people had booked um, and you need to be, you know, in a good head to read them, you know, pay good money for a reading. I don't want to give you a bad reading. Plus it took up 
the, my life because they kind of blew over. So it caused me also to adjust my calendar and kind of think about, well, what can I do? And then catching up with all the clients who had booked and got canceled and all the clients who had booked and not been canceled. So I was just really, really swamped and exhausted from all of this stuff going on. So I would finish and, you know, the weekly weather between the research, the recording, the posting, the putting it on the different social media, it takes about four hours a week to do. So I just, I just had no bandwidth. I had no emotional, uh, no emotional space for it. So I do apologize. Um, I think we're through all of it. He's had his surgery. She's eating a bit. Um, my aunt is moving. The world seems a little calm, so hopefully I'm done. But I do have Saturn opposite my son, uh, you know, three more times. But I think the first is the worst. And also because you saw that Mars hitting my progress Mars. I think that was the, all this stuff kind of appeared. I mean, I knew my transits, but I didn't anticipate they would be like this. So at any rate, I'm back. Um, thank you for the notes, asking about the weekly weather. We'll get back to you. Rose was like, what are you going to do? I said, well, I will, um, sorry, there's my alarm. Um, uh, I didn't know when I was coming back. So now I'm back. So this one is this week. And then on Sunday, I've got a block. I've got the four hours set aside. You'll get a weekly weather. And hopefully now we're back on track for the rest of the next big chapter from 2006 to now. And now we're going. And of course, you know, I took two months off in the last eclipse. And this eclipse, I took two months off, and it was it was a big eclipse. It was right on the Mercury. I am a Virgo. I was eclipsing. So forward into the weekly weather. Apologies. Thanks for your notes. I'm fine, uh, but I'm also Saturn opposite my Moon, or Saturn opposite my Sun, and the Sun rules um, my seventh house. So it was very much a lot, a lot of emotion, a lot of feeling, and I know a lot of you guys had a really tough eclipse too. So we're going to do a little back just to kind of the stuff I would have said if I'd done it. And then we'll catch up with this week. And so here's the solar eclipse against my chart. Uh, again, that one was a new moon at 18, 19, right? And we had the Jupiter Uranus conjunction a couple days later. And that was kind of fun watching the solar eclipse and everybody get excited. This Jupiter Uranus conjunction is a big deal, and we'll talk a bit more about it in a couple seconds because it kind of initiates a new 14-year uh, cycle. And you can see the Mars Saturn there conjunction right on my uh, midpoint opposite my Saturn. So it kind of kept me out in the April eclipses too. And then we had Ceres here in a grand trine, in a trine to my sun. So, you know processing, you know, figuring out what to do, what to do of what's of value to people. For my brother, this was his surgery because he's uh, my third house sibling. This is a surgery for my sister. Um, she was down for about four weeks and wasn't eating and wasn't moving and then kind of woke up and decided she wasn't leaving. And now she's kind of moving around, but she is on hospice. So we know, you know, it's a matter of time. Interestingly, she tracks to Bruce Willis because his family had announced he was having trouble eating and drinking. And then I got the text from Bruce saying, sis, give me a call. Never a good text <laughs> when you're gonna, sis, give me a call from your brother-in-law. Uh, so that was the that was a solar eclipse. And there is a new moon webinar. There are eclipse webinars out there, but there also is a new moon webinar because we just had one <clears throat> this week on February 7th. And you can do your new moon ritual uh, the next few days, today the moon is out of bounds in Gemini, then it'll be in Cancer when it gets to Leo, uh, you know, and all the moons this all the moons this month, this week for the new moon ritual have closing aspect to Neptune. All right, here's our list of aspects for the day, the month of May. We had Pluto station to go retrograde back on May 2nd, so he's now retrograding until October. So we're going to be working with him. We also still have Mercury in his retrograde shadow. Uh, and Mercury is um, went into his shadow on March 9th, right around when I disappeared. Because uh, I think the last podcast I did was the first week in March. He entered his retrograde shadow. And I am a Virgo. So Virgo, Mercury rules me. Um, entered his shadow March 18th, went retrograde on April 1st. 
went direct on April 25th, and these are all in Aries. He clears his shadow next week on May 13th, and he finally leaves Aries on May 15th. Now you're still talking to your ghosts, right? And this was a big Mercury retrograde. Mercury in, is in, Mercury retrogrades are in fire the whole year, and he is, uh, this particular one, when we had him, he was kind of a big deal. So here is the solar eclipse chart that we had as it fired off. It did not have a lot of air, uh, if you remember back on April 8th. It's kind of a nice energy. It's, a, it's actually a fairly nice chart. Path of totality was uh, four minutes and 12 seconds. So that means when it's a solar eclipse, it means we work with years. So that means it's gonna be four and a quarter years because 13 minutes is a, almost a quarter of an hour. Um, divide the minutes by five to get the months, right? So 13 divided by five is two and a half months. Um, so the solar eclipse, of course, it went from Texas through Vermont and a lot of, a lot of hoo-ha around it. I'm sure you, you were there, you paid attention. Um, the path of totality is here as it runs up. Uh, and of course, last five and a half years ago, we had the eclipse come in here over Washington. And that brought the um, that brought the COVID who came across to South Carolina. This one is coming in through the south, and it's an Aries Libra eclipse. So it's a lot about what direction are we heading in, and of course it includes all the border business. And you know, back then there were politics. We got a border deal, cancel the border deal. You you were there, uh, and I was there. Just we weren't talking. Uh, this is the path of the eclipse in, in its totality. These are the paths of visibility. You can kind of see them there. Again, had we had the had we had the weekly weather during it, I would have talked about it. But it also launched what we call a lunar phase family. So you're going to watch what happened on the eclipse here at April 8th. It was at 19. The opening square will be next January when the sun is in Capricorn and the moon is in Aries, and then the full moon will be next October. 25th, October of 25, when the sun is in Libra and the moon is in Aries, and then the closing will be uh, sun in Cancer, closing quarter, closing square, sun in Cancer on July 7th with the sun and moon at 15, Cancer, sun, 15, Aries, moon. So these, this is the longer phases of how that eclipse is going to roll over your life. Note these dates watch the events that happened under these eclipses and know this is the time frame for them. And as you know, as you can tell, this was a big eclipse in my life. Uh, being at 19, um, Aries kind of filling out my T-square. So I'm gonna pay attention to these dates really well. Uh, so that nice energy of it. Now we also have Mars conjunct Saturn, uh, which is a big deal. And that happened. Um, and then Mars also met up with Neptune. So Mars conjunct Saturn, we watch. That happened on April 10th, because that is launching a new two-year cycle of how Mars takes action around karma. And Saturn was on a fixed star that represents karma. Uh, Ar Ar Archinar is at the end of the river. And he spent most of the month kind of parked on that. And the energy of uh, thinking about your purpose, your karma, why you're here as we have these eclipses. The other thing is we have a lot of energy in the sky about endings, right? Changes, transformations, people are very wobbly. And that comes from five planets, five. All of the outer planets are changing signs this year and it early next year. So Jupiter changes every year. So that one we're used to. But Saturn, he's finishing a 29-year cycle of karma as he finishes up with the Pisces planets, back to 95, 96. And what was going on for you then? Back to 67 and what was going on then. That's why we see all the civil rights stuff going on. Um, Uranus has been in Taurus for a long time. He's going to go into Gemini next year. Uh, and that, of course, is a big shift for him uh, from Earth, Earth, Earth to air. Uh, Jupiter right now is in Taurus, a sign of his exaltation, which is nice. But at May 31st, he goes into Gemini and he will be in the sign of his fall, which is not makes next year from, from May, May 31st to June 
22nd, next 2025, that's going to be a little difficult. We're going to have to do everything two times. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the May 31st date, but we know the Jupiter's changing. We know the Saturn's going to leave Pisces and go into Aries. Saturn in Aries is not a sign he likes. That happens next spring, but he's in this wrap-up mode of everything you've been working on since 1967, 68, and 1995, 96, right? So you're back in those days. Uranus is changing. He spends eight years in a sign, taking or seven seven years in a sign, and it takes him 84 years to go around. So he's going to shift. He's been into our sin 16, uh, and he's going to change into Gemini, where he's a little more freewheeling. He's a little more able to get things accomplished. Neptune, he's going to be at 29 all summer, uh, and he is shifting into Aries. Last, he takes 165 years to go around the circle around the chart. Last time he was in Aries was the Civil War, United States. Um, again, Neptune in fire. He's in Pisces now, um, so he's dissolving things. He, he's dissolving stuff. And Pluto has been dancing back and forth between the last degree of rock, Capricorn, and air, Aquarius. So right now he's in Aquarius. He just went retrograde a couple days ago, and he will go back into Capricorn for the election, September, October, November. 20th through November 20th, where we get to decide what we want to do about the power structures that govern us and the kind of government we want. Um, so that's Pluto. So that's a lot of planets. It's very rare that that many planets shift in like such a short 12-month uh, window. But that also means they're all at the last degrees and they're all pushing us and going, nah, 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 nah. Like, did you do this? Did you, you know how like when you're in a rush getting ready to catch a plane or something and you're like, okay, do I have my passport? Do I have, da, 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 what do I have to do? So the planets are like that, but they're also very unstable because they're wrapping up systems and cycles that began. Neptune, Neptune's case began 14 years ago when he went in Pisces. And so if you think back to 2010, there's a lot of these old stories kind of coming up and wanting to be resolved, wanting to be worked with on a deeper level. Next up, we have on April 20th, we have this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which happens every 14 years in a, a sign. The last time it happened was in 210, and that was the last degree of Pisces, where Neptune is now. And Aries, zero Aries. So we started a cycle then, and then there was one in 97 which was in Sag. If you have a Jupiter-Uranus aspect in your chart, like I do, um, you're, and you ended a 14-year cycle, uh, which I ended while I was MIA <laughs> on April 20th. But it also is a nice Taurus aspect. I did a whole webinar on this, which you're welcome to purchase and talk, you know, learn about how it's going to lay out in your chart. We also have the moon here at the last degrees of, Pi of Virgo on the world point of zero Libra, what's our relationship dynamics. When we look at the Sabian image for this particular aspect, I particularly loved it. The Sabian image for Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus is a white dove flying straight and fearlessly over troubled waters. So that suggests to us that what we wanna do with this conjunction, wherever you have 21 Taurus in your chart, in my case, it's in my third house of my siblings, my communication, my writing, my talking, my teaching, you're starting a new 14-year cycle there. And once it gets up and going, you know, it takes it a while, you know, they meet up and they make a deal, and then it takes 14 years for them to unfold what they're going to do. But if you think about the cycle that happened uh, 14 years ago in 210, 211, you know, January of 211, you were like, oh, yeah, that cycle did just come to an end. And then the one that happened in Sag in 95, and then there was one in Libra back in 84. Um, and then there was, uh, they're, they're, they've happened repeatedly. <laughs> so this one is, the one, I was born under one back in 54. So these cycles correspond to these dates, uh, the Jupiter-Uranus cycle, the conjunction in Aries uh, back in 1927, uh, the conjunction in Taurus, which is the one we're having now, that was World War II. Uh, in May of 41 was considered one of the deadliest months of the war um, over physical territory. 
The conjunction in Cancer was in 54. That's the one I was born under. There was one in Libra in December of 68. That's the one my aunt came home from a convent in um, and now is moving here. Actually, she was already home by then. And that's when she met Uncle Lou. And then Sagittarius, um, 1983. Then there was one in Aquarius in 97. And there was one in Pisces in 210. Pisces in zero Aries. And then the one we have in Taurus now. And then the next one, uh, which will happen when I'm 84, because I have the Jupiter in Cancer. Jupiter, Uranus, and Cancer will be in September of 37. Because remember, this Uranus is a component of this, and he takes 84 years uh, to go around the circle. Jupiter wants to expand everything and make it happy and bright and big and juicy. And Uranus uh, wants to change things. Now, if you notice in this eclipse, and again, I do a whole webinar on it, which you can go through, but I want you to just notice here, Venus is at 19 Aries. That's the same day as the, the eclipse that we had on April 8th. So that eclipse was at 19 um, air, The Sun, Moon, and Chiron were all at 19 Aries. And now Venus is triggering it. And in a few weeks, when Mars gets there, he'll trigger it. And so the eclipse is kind of the setup for this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction because we're working with we're working with this energy for 14 years and we're kind of loading it up think of it as that the conjunction happens we look at the companion energies most important to my mind is a white dove flying straight and fearlessly over troubled waters which says we should all be straight and uh, fly straight and fearlessly over the troubled waters in our lives and uh, if you remember your your mythology or your biblical stories noah sent out a white dove and it returned with an olive branch to let him know land was near. So these dates resonate with you. Um, you know, those were times, those are earlier times when the 14 year cycle started. All right, then the other thing we had, because Mercury was in Aries, this one was, this one was a little harder. Um, I love my hammers of Thor. This particular hammer was particularly nasty. Uh, Mercury is in Aries here, and it's forming a sesquiquadrate to two planets who are in square. So here we have Juno in square, Juno uh, squaring um, uh, Pallas Athena, and in Sagittarius. So this this is the hammer. So the first, and remember, it's Mercury retrograde. So the hammer number one, Mercury is 22 and a half Aries on a world point. So these were world hammers. We had Princess Kate announce that she had cancer like two days before it. And then we had the Baltimore Bridge collapse two days after it. I mean, it was like the hammer hit, boom, Princess Kate. News of her illness, Jupiter in Virgo, I did think, I remember looking at her chart back when she had the surgery in January and thinking, I'm not talking about this chart. She's got some big health stuff going on. And it was planned surgery and we, Virgo, right? uh and health and then sag you know foreign royal palace athena with the photograph getting published uh, it was photoshopped you know kind of craziness but at any rate so she the whole world was speculating where she was the internet went crazy and then she came out and said hi i have cancer and you know everybody kind of went oh wow maybe i was a little bad there and then of course that bridge collapsing and you went down like a house of cards that's a hammer of thor people Next up, the second hammer was on April 11th to 10. And again, the same planets, same, same configuration, but now it's world points with Pallas Athena, who's a war goddess in the eighth house. And the hammer's here um, at 22, again, on a world point. Again, partnership here, partners, partners working together in war. And that was the uh, roots for, that was when, um, uh, Iran was shooting um, missiles over Jordan's airspace into uh, Israel and the United States, France, Britain, Jordan, and Israel were shooting them down that weekend, right? Because it was the it was a day or two before that that weekend it hit, and all those drones striking. And of course, it's the year of the dragon. And the British, <laughs> I was looking at the BBC, the British government has this big thing they call the dragon, and it's shooting fire out of it 
at these drones. I'm like, you can't make this up. It's like the dragon shooting fires. And we had those four carved dragons. Again, there was all this stuff going on. And I wanted to talk about it, but I was so busy. Um, all these four dragons shooting up, uh, they caught on fire, these four wooden dragons, on four years after the uh, cathedral in Notre Dame in um, France, in Paris, caught on fire. So the carved wooden dragons. And it is the year of the dragon. It's the year of the wood dragon. So there were wooden dragons in the news. Um, then we had uh, we had Pluto stationing to go retrograde. Now he got as far as two six. He's going to go back into 29 Capricorn, uh, September, October, November to November 20th, and then he gets into Aquarius for good for true. So I always like to look at stations because this tells us what's ahead of us. We see Jupiter rising. I'm not Jupiter rising. We see Regulus rising, the King, the Sun. We see the Jupiter Uranus up here at the top of the chart. This is the chart cast for DC, um, and this this conjunction, you know, which is running our lives for the next 14 years, wherever that 22 was in your chart, go look where 22 Taurus was, and we see, okay, this this Pluto station down here in the sixth house of what's of value to us, what's important to us, what is going on with us, with our work, our home, and then of course we see the Moon in Aquarius, very last degree kind of thinking, but we have Mars and Aries, which is a nice Mars for getting things accomplished on this retrograde. But we also are thinking, you know, what kind of, with, with Aquarius, it's like, what do we want to do with our community? What do we want to do with our uh, our tribe? How do, what kind of tribe do we want? And so those are important questions that are going to be asked of us between now and when Pluto gets back into Aquarius on November 20th. Next up, we have Mars um, in a sextile to Pluto. Uh, so Mars sextile Pluto says, let's take some action. <clears throat> so he's at two Aries, which is his favorite sign. Venus is in Taurus, her favorite sign. The Jupiter and Uranus are in Taurus, the dove flying of peace. And Mars in an opening sextile to Pluto. Now remember back in January when Mars and Mercury and Venus all came to meet Pluto. And they all said, hi, how are you? They had a conjunction. And now we have the opening sextile of what happened in the fall, in the spring, back in January. Not the spring, I guess the winter. Um, and so we're working with this opening sextile energy of, okay, let's go forward and bring things out into the world. Next up, we have Mars trying Pallas Athena. Uh, that's on May 4th. So Mars here. Uh, with on, on this moon, right before the new moon, dark of the moon, Mars trining Pallas Athena, uh, which is taking strategic approaches to getting things accomplished and done. And Mars and Pallas Athena are both in a, what we call a minor grand trine to Pluto here. So this makes this a good time to get things accomplished, have strategy, figure out what your strategic approach is and where you're going. And that happened on May 4th, on Saturday, May 4th. Um, so now we're into current aspects for the week. We did kind of a quick review of the eclipses when I was off, when I was eclipsing, when I left. Uh, so Mars here forming a, a trine to Pallas Athena and a sextile to Pluto in Aquarius is asking us to really kind of focus on our values and what's important to us. Now, Neptune is at 29 where he is going to be all summer long, May, June, July, August. And then he goes back to 27. But next year, he goes into zero Aries. So Neptune is going to want to dissolve a lot of stuff. And what you want to do is go, I think that's dissolving, and let it go. Just be very gentle, bless it, thank it, have a ritual of release. And as Mars kind of pushes us along and says, what are you thinking? What's your strategy? Where do you want to go with this Pluto energy? So it's an, a revision of the strategy, but it's also putting in place I have an idea of what I want to do because Mars is a happy place. And notice Mercury here is back at 19 degrees of Aries, not quite to the hammer of Thor. Uh, again, that's this weekend. So we'll watch what Mercury does as he moves into the hammer. But we also see um, uh, this energy here of new beginnings, new directions, new ideas, and we're triggering the eclipse. You're going to watch 19 degrees of Aries like a hawk whenever that aspect gets activated. So we've now had Venus go over it. Now we're going to have Mercury go over it. 
and in a couple of weeks Mars is going to go over it and trigger it and activate the eclipse energy which is also tied to the new 14 years that you're running with that Jupiter Uranus and Taurus. So the next hammer of Thor is here. Mars is Mercury is now on the eclipse degree rather than 22. So now he's taking all those the bridge collapse Princess Kate the war in uh, Gaza and uh, Palestine and Israel um, the war there and making it more active um, so that's this this weekend May 4th uh, that we just had and um, we see uh, Jupiter Juno and Virgo partnering and we see uh, Pallas Athena and Sag Sagittarius also has college education so we've had the protests on the college campus we've had protests all over the world about the war and we know the war is involved because we saw that um, the second one where the the missiles coming from uh, Iran into Israel so we you know we see you see the theme kind of right this this energy of where are we going and what are we doing so that uh, that um, last hammer is happening now happening last weekend through this week so we'll see what happens currently Benjamin Netanyahu and Biden are having a little bit of a fight. They also reauthorized the the weapons, but Biden said, "I'm not going to give them to you uh, if you're going to keep beating up on Gaza." So interesting political changes. Remember that white dove bringing a little olive branch, flying fearlessly over troubled water. So we're all going to be asked to fly fearlessly over troubled water for the next 14 years, or a subset thereof. So it's all good, and we're in process. So we see the campus protests. Uh, of course, that's the Juno, and then the Palace Athena and Sag, which is education and war. It's got a war energy, and then Mercury here with the hammer. Next up, we have Saturn semi-square Pluto. Um, so this one's interesting because remember Saturn and Pluto met up during COVID. They met up in March of uh, 2020, or actually the, the winter of 2020, and that was COVID coming in. And now there are semi-square. So semi-squares are stressful energies. They're a 45 degree angle. And what if we're, I always make the analogy when I'm trying to explain a semi-square, it's kind of like when you pop a can open, like a can of tuna fish or a can of cat food or whatever, and the tab rips off. And then you have to get the spoon and kind of pry it out. I think of semi-squares like that. They're a stressful energy. So Saturn is in a semi-square to Pluto, which is a stressful energy that's happening now. Saturn, of course, is authority. He's in a sign of Pisces, which is old. Pluto is, of course, a sign of war, as well as partnership, because he's in Aquarius, like who we're partnering with. And so we're having a fight with our partner. You know, a lot of people say Biden uh, with Israel and you you know, wanting, you know, I mean, that whole story, which is, you can see how excited it is with all these planets sitting in a Greek chorus. And I'm uh, not going to spend a lot of time on it other than to say Israel is a tourist country and a lot of Leo. They have a, what we call a fixed square in their chart. And back when I was a baby astrologer, I used to teach, you know, different charts and stuff. And every time I taught the chart of Israel, we would pull it out, people would get excited. It was, it, it, it's got like a, a very defensive argumentative energy in it. Obviously, this little country is surrounded by people that want to kill it off. But it also has this, you know, it's, it's, it's a very strong chart because it's Taurus you know if you know the bull and you know the lion got the lion and the bull in there right so um, their chart is obviously very active because they're currently at war so I encourage you to go look at Israel's chart examine it yourself don't don't talk to other astrologers about it because you'll get into you'll get into you'll get into stuff but um, it's a fascinating chart and it's very active so I'm not going to do it here um, because I've taught this chart many times and I know what, how, I know how it, it's fire, it's fiery earth. Everybody gets very impassioned, but it's helpful to look at the transits to it because it is lit up like a Christmas tree. Um, very active right now. 
and of course, as is Iran's, uh, it's very active. So, you know, pay attention to them. I don't have a working time for Hamas, so, but I definitely encourage you to do it on your own. I'm not doing it on the weekly weather. Um, all right, then we had a new moon this week. Ah, we love those new moons. So I have a, when I had a new moon webinar on Sunday, if you're on my mailing list, you would have gotten notified about it. Um, and this is the new moon. Uh, it is a nice new moon. I would definitely encourage you to do a ritual. It's not too late. Um, it is a creative moon in the fifth house here in New York or in uh, Washington with Sag rising uh, and then the nodes angular. Mars is in his rulership. Venus is in her rulership. Mercury is at 21, uh, which is where the earlier hammers were uh, when Mercury went through the past one, past two, and he's triggering them again. So we should hear news about the royal family and news about the bridge and news about Israel and the uh, Palestine the war in Gaza. So forward, a um, lot of energy with this new moon and a nice one. So I would encourage you to do a new moon ritual. The Taurus new moon is considered one of the most fertile of the year. And this one is very juicy because the ruler of all those Taurus planets, Sun and Moon, Jupiter and Uranus is in Taurus. She's in her favorite sign. So she's leading the pack. And she also is working with the Midheaven, the direction of the charts heading in and the South Node. So she's like, I got this. Mars, back in Aries, happy guy, because he was in Pisces for a while. He's in Aries and he's driving the North Node. He's hopped in behind the steering wheel of the North Node and he's like, let's go, let's go. So it's a very active, let's get things moving kind of chart. Um, the, the symbols for it are passion. There is a little treachery in there from Venus. So we're gonna watch her. We're gonna watch for a treacherous woman uh under this new moon and you know there's a lot of things going on with women involved uh so kind of you want to go with marjorie taylor green you want to go with stormy daniels you want to go with susan necklace the, the attorney that questioned uh stormy daniels just a lot of women you know a lot of women going hmm are you being treacherous and or not Oops, there's my other alarm i said two alarms but i woke up early today to do this podcast all right, then the next up is um, Sun is sextiling Saturn this week. That happened on Tuesday. Again, a good productive energy. Um, sun is in opening sextile. You know, think back to when the Sun met Pisces in Pisces time. And, it, you know, it happens every year. But this is a delivery. You know, it's it, like I want to bring you some goods. I want to bring you some stuff. And then next week, the Sun is going to go through this Jupiter Uranus thing and illuminate it. So that will be very helpful because it's going to then light it up and say, okay, this is your mission. So we'll talk more about that next week. And then next up, we have Mars in the semi-square to Uranus. This is a stroke aspect. When I see this in the client's chart, I always go, okay, so we're gonna pay attention to sudden unexpected endings, strokes, changes. We see the Jupiter Uranus angular. We see the Mars here in the, in the, the fifth house. Um, so that's that's something to watch, and that is going to be on Friday, uh, today, later today, around eight o'clock at night. So we're gonna we're gonna pay attention to it. That period of time tonight is very potent because we have the Mars Uranus. One of the reasons I wanted to do this, even though I was thinking I'd wait till Sunday, I'm kind of like, no, this is happening on Friday. To get it done, I'll do another one on Sunday. So the Mars Uranus semi sextile or semi square rather is a stress stress energy and got a stroke component to it uh, unexpected health matters and Venus is on a world point as is Neptune which is the next one Venus is in a semi square to Neptune another aspect both of them are on world points notice this one is 821 827 the other one's 821. So we know something big is happening today, uh, this evening, around eight o'clock. This is being recorded on Friday morning. I thought, I'm not gonna wait till, I'm not gonna wait till Sunday. This needs to go out. Any health aspects you have, pay attention. Pay attention, pay attention just for your time zone. So five o'clock for the California people. Um, and we also have Jupiter here on the fixed star algal, uh, which is beheading and losing one's head. 
it doesn't have to be physical it can also be just you know something happens so we're going to pay attention to this energy it's very potent and then here it is kind of broken down you can see the venus here on the world point of 15 taurus uh in a semi-square to neptune on the world point of 29 pisces we see mars here <clears throat> in Aries, his favorite sign, Venus is in her favorite sign, Mars here, semi-square Uranus at 22 Taurus on the angle, All right? So this is a this has got a real big, real big component. So we're going to really watch the news tonight, Friday night, because I'm doing this Friday morning, um, and see where it goes. And then I will be back on Sunday with next week. But do your new moon ritual. So there is a Taurus new moon manifestation recording available on my website. Feel free to purchase it. You get it slides, you get the audio, you get the visual. And then I also recorded a great Jupiter Uranus conjunction that we had on April 20th, which starts a new 14 year cycle, which I did a little bit here. There I do a two hour presentation on it and how to work with it and how it lands in your chart and all that kind of stuff. But it's definitely the great benefic Jupiter in his exaltation meeting up with Uranus saying, let's change, baby. Let's get some stuff done. Uh, I also am working, there's an Oprah retreat that will be taking place in October this year in Utah, in New Park Resorts, right outside, you fly into Salt Lake City. It's near Park City, uh, which is a ski resort out there. And obviously it's in October, so it's not going to be skiing, but it will be a little cold. Um, but there'll be a nice retreat uh, celebrating the Aquarian shift, everything shifting into Aquarius. And then my friend Alexandria and um, uh, Ariel Gutman are running a cruise, not a cruise, a tour in Australia, or not Australia, in Greece that will, I haven't had enough coffee yet. Have you noticed that? I haven't had enough coffee. They're running a tour in Greece that runs May 27th to June 9th. And we will have a Sun Venus Kazemi, a Venus star point. Ariel Gutman uh, teaches that uh, while they're on that tour. So it's a nice tour. Check out Alexandria Karakostas' website, K A R A C O S T A S, Wisdom Astrology. So if you're interested in going to Greece with two astrologers leading a lovely retreat, May 27th to June 9th. And as always, a couple of stars. Uh, is available for you to sign up for. Uh, you get a six to 10 minute audio, a list of the timed aspects of the day, uh, and a song sent to you. Sign up on Patreon for $17 a month. And then here we have Earth Rising. Wishing you a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful couple of days. I'll be back on Sunday. Uh, but I, I was like, I am doing this podcast. <laughs> and I want you to know, I would sit down and I would prep it. And then it, the week would just go like that. And I would just go swept away. Bye. And Mars was hanging out with Neptune, swept away. Bye. So I'm back. Um, thank you for all the notes and love and cards. And thank you for the prayers. Uh, some of you knew what was going on because you're Patreon people. Um, and I was, you know, I was talking about it there. Uh, but also, you know, it's nice to be back. Um, the world is calming down. I adjusted my schedule so I don't, if something hits, because I still have three, I have two more passes of, um, well, the Saturn to my sons. That's not done until February, end of February. But it's like, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it and having to help, but I, there's nothing I can do. It's not like last fall when it was me, my moon getting attacked by Saturn. Attacked is the wrong word. Saturn coming to sit on my moon. Now it's like responsibilities. But I appreciate the thoughts, the prayers, the help, the notes. Um, Rose is like, when are you doing the weekly weather? I said, oh, Rose. But I think we're back. I need the bandwidth to do it. And so I've adjusted my schedule so the weekly weather will have its four hours that it needs. And I appreciate all your help and appreciate the love. And hopefully um, you, you saw the astrology in action, including the sis, please call me at 5.53, where I just went whoosh off into the eclipse hole. And that is why I believe in eclipses. Uh, the eclipses are here. They're, they came, they went, you all had them. Hopefully you all survived well and are here on the other side getting ready for our next chapter, which looks to be quite a bit of fun. 
take care and i'll talk to you next week bye or talk to you on sunday